Hi Scorpio, Sun, Moon, Ascendant, or Venus, this is Dane, and I'm going to be doing your November 16th to 30th, 2021 reading for you. Now I ask if this reading resonates with you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. If you're interested in any of the cards that I'm using, they will be listed and linked in the description box below. Now before we begin this reading, let us clear the energy space, raising our own energy vibration and releasing any negativity. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. Releasing all negativity from the body like storm clouds. Letting yourself feel calm, centered, and at peace as we enter into the safe and loving space. Let's let the bowl sing as we see what the tarot has to say. Scorpio. November 16th to the 30th, 2021, Scorpio. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly, angels and spirit guides, angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. All right, so at the bottom is our rooted self. The left-hand side is our inner self. The middle, our heart, our emotional self. The right-hand side, the public arena, the public self. So let's see what the cards have to say. We have the death card, which is us, Scorpio, shining through at our root. And we have the emperor, which is Aries energy, which is interesting because Aries is ruled by Mars. And Scorpio, we were traditionally, anciently, before Pluto was discovered, ruled by Mars. And then Pluto was taken away, but... Astrologically, we are ruled by Pluto, and we can also say we are also ruled by Mars. So there is going to be strong energy connecting us with our ruling planets, but also with the sense of embracing our power, embracing our intensity, embracing the way that we want to move forward in our lives. Also, if we have Aries energy within our natal chart or within our lives, they're coming through very powerfully at our root. Then we have our inner selves. We have the chariot, which is cancer energy. If we have cancer within our natal charts or in our lives, that's going through very powerfully here in our inner self. And then we have the wheel of fortune. Everything is changing. Everything is changing and our angels are unraveling a lot of muck and mire that is around us. Then we have our emotional selves. We have the three of swords and then we have that Aries energy coming through again, that emperor. If we face a lot of the hurts, the pains, and the fears that we have around us, we are going to be able to ascend to a throne, ascend to power. And that's going to be a really great thing. It doesn't mean that we have to be necessarily the most powerful person in the room, because if you're going to, let's say, do a a, a like quest and have to pick your character, like a D and D type of thing, you would you would pick the the most common one for a Scorpio would be kind of like the the spy, you know, the, the person in the shadows, not the emperor, the one that everybody looks at, the one that everybody sees. So this is going to be very much a sense of I'm embracing my power. I'm standing on this throne. I'm, I'm 
I'm claiming this authority for myself and for my way forward, but I don't want anybody to know about it. I get to keep it under wraps. The Six of Swords, we're, we're moving. We're defining boundaries, yes, most definitely, but we're also gathering up a lot of knowledge, a lot of the insight that we have, and we're moving forward towards more. The Ten of Wands is responsibilities, but we're also releasing a lot of responsibilities that we've taken on that necessarily aren't ours or that can't be fixed. It's kind of like that's just going to have to work itself out. And we're looking at responsibilities here and saying, okay, I'm moving forward towards what I need, what I want within my life. And I'm putting down a lot of things that I carry that are completely overwhelming. And it leads us once again to the real wheel of fortune. So now we have the wheel of fortune twice within this reading. The repeat of the number 10 shows us that we're coming to the completion of a cycle, but also this is this is fate. This is beautiful things coming forward. This is a sense of change and power and insight and ideas. And there's a real sense of I'm moving towards the beauty and the prosperity that is me. And nobody gets to take that away from me. But we're going to feel a little bit during this time, kind of like we're on a roller coaster ride, like things are a little bit more intense than we had anticipated them on being. And that's because so much is changing for us. Let's look at our energy to be mindful of. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly. Angels and spirit guides. Angels and spirit guides, show me clearly. Now, this is the Queen of Cups. Quarter sign energy, Pisces, Scorpio, Cancer. So we're being told not to get in our own way here. Definitely first off the bat. We're also being shown manipulations of the heart and the way that emotionally people will try to either wear us down or get to us because we're not moving forward the way that they want us to so just be just be mindful of that this will definitely happen around the phases of the moon so the new moon which is on the 19th not the new moon I'm, i do apologize the full moon which is on the 19th of november and the third quarter moon which is on the 27th of november so just be mindful of that around the moon phases when that's when we're going to see this manipulation, this push and this pull come out a little bit more than we wanted to. Okay. Or more than we wanted to at all. And then we have the chakra energy, angels and spirit guides. Show me clearly. Guide this reading and show me clearly angels. Oh goodness. And spirit guides. We have personal power, which is what this time is all about for us. It's the solar plexus chakra. It is a sense of embracing and embodying our personal power as we move forward, listening to our gut, listening to the way that we embrace ourselves and move forward within ourselves and, you know, go after what it is that we want, but also the way that we look at ourselves, the way of actually seeing who it is that we are. And so this is going to be a very powerful time. So let's talk about this astrologically, because this is an astrological and tarot reading. So we're going to see how all of this coincides. On the 16th of November, we have the Sun sextile Pluto, which brings with it magnetic attraction and also this sense of innate charm is coming forward now be it because this is ast astrologically people are all over are going to be feeling this but because we are ruled by pluto we're also ruled by mars so we're going to use both of them here but because we're ruled by pluto pluto this is going to hit us more impactfully than it will others because of this our charm is just a little bit greater than everybody else's charm our magnetism is greater than everybody else's magnetism we are driven we are determined and we almost feel unstoppable and this is all amplified because we're ruled by pluto on the 17th of november mars is opposite uranus which brings excitement and unexpected energy that has us inclined towards risk taking what we have to be mindful of is that even though we're inclined towards this risk taking we're also going to be astoundingly rebellious so we're going to need to step back and say okay am i taking this risk because i want to take this risk or am i taking this risk because i'm rebelling against what these people said i can't do or what i think others are expecting me not to be able to do on the 18th of november mercury is trying neptune which brings an alluring energy with it that has us <laughs> more attractive and also has us really embracing our imagination, really embracing our dreams and what we desire. So this is a beautiful time to really start creating. This is also a great time for meeting people and connecting, date night if we have a partner or going out if we don't, or even just going out no matter what. On the 19th of November, and also that's the same thing, going out, having fun on the 16th of November, date night if we are with somebody, but just the sense of embracing our lives. On the 19th of November, Venus 
this is trying Uranus, which brings an energy of wanting to feel free, unique, and social. On the 19th of November, remember, again, we have the full moon coming in in Taurus, and this is also a lunar eclipse, and a separate video will be done on this new moon, on this full moon. On the 20th of November, Mercury is squared Jupiter, which brings with it this clear and open mind, and so it almost feels like we can do anything. It's like, okay, I got this all figured out, but we have a lack of discipline. So we have this clear, beautiful mind, this way of connecting things together. And we're like, oh my gosh, tomorrow, tomorrow, I will totally work it out. I will get it all done. I will absolutely understand how everything's supposed to go together. And then the next day, it doesn't really work out the same way. It doesn't lend itself to the openness. So do be mindful of this, okay? Because we're going to find it tricky to utilize our talent that is, that is, is coming forward on the 20th of November. On the 21st of November, Mercury is sextile Pluto. Again, because we're ruled by Pluto, this affects us more than it affects others. This is a very serious time. Everybody's taking this day astoundingly seriously. This could be why we don't, on the 20th of November, when we say, oh, I'll do it all tomorrow. I have this clear sight, this, this beautiful vision. Well, the 21st brings with it a very serious, you know, intense energy and atmosphere. And we can discover a lot about ourselves, but we're also going to find it hard to embrace the flow of things, embrace our intuition. If we can embrace our intuition and the flow of things, things become a little bit easier. But again, it's very serious, so that open creativity isn't going to be there. On the 27th of November, we have the third quarter moon in Virgo, which brings us to this energy of I accept myself, I'm knowing that I am enough, I'm bringing my power to the table, and I'm looking and I'm embracing who it is that I am. On the 28th of November, the sun is conjunct Mercury, which is the best time for communication and for important ideas to come to the surface. We can have so much going on during this time, and this is going to be the problem with everybody. It's like we have this beautiful way of working things and getting things together, but we have so much going on and so much to think about that we're all in our own heads instead of listening. And so that's going to be where we find a lot of difficulty during this time that we're in our own heads, we're not listening to anybody. So make sure on the 28th that we kind of have our listening ears on, if we want to word it like that, that we're, we're paying attention to the world around us or that we take the time off just to be in our own space or to work from home if we can, you know, to do something or to designate, you know, if we're, you know, having people do certain things to be like, okay, you do this, you do that and keep everybody a little bit separate because nobody's going to be really hearing each other and that's going to make for a bit of, of argument. So just being aware of that. On the 29th of November, Mars is trying Neptune. Now, again, remember, we're ruled by Pluto, but we're also ruled by Mars. And so this makes us suave and sexy and creative. We are also passionate, just so passionate about what we believe in. We are motivated and we are motivating people and ourselves because of this spiritual courage. And people on this day have this beautiful spiritual courage. On the 30th of November, Mercury is sextile Saturn. Now, what this brings forward is a focus and the ability to see the bigger picture. We can be single-minded. We can you know, just be absolutely obsessed and focused with reaching our goals and every single detail. So do be aware of that. On the 30th of November, Venus is sextile Neptune, which makes us passionate, romantic, and sensual. Relationships become a very important factor during this time. But again, remember, because the 30th also has Mercury sextile Saturn, which is all about work. And then we have Venus sextile Neptune, which is all about passion and relationships, that we can feel pulled into very distinct different directions. The thing is, is that also on the 30th of November, we have the sun sextile Saturn, which brings a sense of identity through leadership, through finding and embracing our voice and our ambition. And so we're going to kind of pick which camp we want to be in. Is it going to be the Mercury sextile Saturn, which is work, or is it going to be the Venus sextile Neptune? I actually see here Scorpio, unlike a lot of the other signs, which are picking one camp or the other, we're going to be you know, kind of bouncing back and forth. But we have to remember on this day, we can't bring 100% to every single thing that we do. We have to kind of be kinder to ourselves and move ourselves back. So do be aware of that. We start with the death card. We start with the dying away of the old self, the rebirth of the new, which is this is where we live. We live in this beautiful place of transformation, of intention, of determination, of insight, and of ideas. This, the sense of 
the Scorpio energy here, this sense of I am transforming and I am embracing the very essence of me has us leaving behind a part of ourselves that we once were, or has us not a part of ourselves, has us leaving behind our old selves. So this can be something that we mourn. We could sit there and go be going through a very hard time in our lives and be mourning that carefree, you know, person that had the easy smile and the easy laugh that just isn't there right now. We could be coming out of a very hard time in our lives where the person who was overwhelmed and, and beaten down is is no longer there and we're moving forward to that carefree and that happiness, that sense of I'm embracing me. But what we have to do during this time is embrace where we are in our spiritual journey, in our sense of coming into ourselves, in embracing our personal power, in following who we are and where it is we want to be within our lives. So the death card is showing us this transformation, but Scorpio, we're no stranger to transformations. We're no stranger to this sense of, I have to walk through many incarnations of myself to stand where I need to stand in the waking world now. And we're also looking at our past lives. Scorpio, I really do feel like we are more connected with our past lives, with our even our generational energy than most people are. And people look at Scorpios and they're like, ooh, you know, I don't understand you. And that's because we're not meant to be understood. We're meant to be loved. We're meant to be respected. We're meant to be, you know, cherished. But we're not always meant to be understood. And that's an okay thing. And it moves us to the emperor. It moves us to claiming our power, but also claiming that warrior energy within us. You know, Pluto is the god of the underworld. Mars is the god of war. And we can almost say that the fallen, well, we can always say that the fallen of the god of war made it to the realm of the god of the dead. And yes, everybody makes it into the realm of the god of the dead. So that is why we have this, this sense of my army only grows and never shrinks. Why would I want more? You know, that's the type of thing that's around us. It's kind of like, I have this power around me that only ever grows and never ever shrinks. Why are you trying to get me to want a different power? get me to want a different way forward. And what we're seeing here with the Mars energy coming forward, but also with this emperor, with claiming our throne and claiming our power and claiming our voice, is that we're beginning to accept and respect the path that we are on. We're beginning to respect the fact that we are embracing our voice, we're embracing our power, we're moving forward in our determination, and that has us and our angels, that has our angels unraveling a lot of the muck and the mire that is around us, has us unrav unraveling a lot of the mess that we have found ourselves in, or that we have gotten into just through the simple act of living. And so as life is unraveled, as we are unraveled, as we move forward, and it can feel at times that we're being unraveled, like we're being pushed to a limit, that we're being tested in a really intense way, we start to see this change, we start to see this determination, we start to see this focus around us, and it moves us to the chariot because we're seeing everything change and we're we're no stranger to change we we just aren't it's a sense of i walk between worlds and not everybody understands but i accept and it brings us to our angels guiding us and this is a time where our heart really does lead us forward this is a time where in our inner selves it's like okay my subconscious and my conscious are coming together i understand the realm between worlds more more than most people ever do and I'm moving myself forward in passion, in determination, in focus, in insight, in ideas. And as I do so, I'm facing emotionally a lot of the fears that had me cowering in the corner, a lot of the fears that made me feel inadequate and that I couldn't show up to the race of life, that I couldn't show up with the intensity of existence that other people have. And now I'm naming these fears. I'm naming these hurts. I'm naming these pains. And I'm moving myself forward in a place that I need to be in a place that my soul longs to be, in a place that is an expression of the beauty and the intensity of me because I'm no longer hiding away. And that's where we claim the throne of the emperor. That's where we claim the throne of this is who I am, this is what I want, and this is where I'm going. The repeat of the number four right here has us really looking at taking care of ourselves, taking care of our home, you know, moving forward in a, a place of passion and our root chakra, like the root of us is coming forward. And the root of us is power. The root of us is intensity. The root of us is insight and ideas and focus and determination. And it moves us to taking all our energy, all our understanding, understanding our boundaries and moving forward, going after what we want, going after what we desire, knowing that it's, it's crazy, the road that we're going to be on and that we're taking a risk. But we need to see 
how. We need to see how we move forward. We need to see what we go after. We need to see what's there on the other side as I've armed myself with as much knowledge as I possibly have. And it moves us then to the 10 of wands. And the 10 of wands are all the responsibilities that are laid, laid upon our backs. Everything that we work for, everything that we're determined to go after, everything that happens to us and doesn't happen to us and all the regrets and all the dreams of other people that we are close to or even not close to, but we're just trying to make everything better. We put this all on ourselves, our dreams and our aspirations. And what Spirit is saying here is let yourself be free. You are coming to the end of a cycle when it comes to passion, when it comes to work, when it comes to fire and determination and focus. Let that cycle die away. Let us embrace who we are now. Let us embrace where we stand and why we stand here. Let us look at ourselves openly and honestly as we take the weight of the world off our shoulders. Because this is going to be a time, especially in the public arena, as we're moving forward, people are going to be more than happy to put all the weight of the world back on our shoulders. To tell us, Scorpio, but don't you have to do this? And don't you have to do that? And I need you for this and I need you for that. And this is going to be a time where we need to step back and say, okay, you know, what is it that I can handle and what is it that I can't? We have to be very honest with our limitations. And it brings us then to the wheel of a fortune. And this is actually, we have now the repeat of the number 10 three times. So this is divinity telling us that we've come to the end of the cycle. We've come to the end of this realization. And the 10, uh, the wheel of fortune, the 10 in the major arcana, is like things are changing. Now we can feel completely out of our comfort zone. We can feel completely overwhelmed. We can feel intense and, you know, determined and focused and, and insightful. But we're coming to the end of the cycle. And what we're going to see here is that we feel like we're on a roller coaster ride. And then we feel like we've found a little bit more of ourselves than we had before. And as we find this beauty within ourselves, we claim this power that is ourselves. Our subconscious energy to be mindful of is the Queen of Wands. We need to be mindful of passion ruling everything. Okay, just taking away our better judgment. We need to be mindful of fire sign energy, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, but the people who use their fire and their force to just manipulate everything in their way. Things are hidden that are going to be coming forward and they're going to knock us off our game. So just be mindful of that. Our subconscious chakra energy is clarity. This is the third eye chakra. Things are becoming a lot more clear than they were before. The third eye chakra is opening. Things are becoming clear, things are becoming open, things are becoming honest, and the clarity is leading us forward. We're going to be seeing things in a way that we hadn't seen them before. We're going to be moving forward in a way that we thought, oh, that's just not for me. No, now it is. Now it definitely is. Our subconscious rooted message is the magician as above, so below. As we believe it, so it becomes. We are becoming something more. We're becoming the very essence of our beliefs and the very power of our thoughts. So with the magician, we are moving forward in that power, in those insights, in those ideas. We're embracing our elemental self, the food that, you know, nourishes us, the drinks that, you know, the water that, that quenches us, that keeps us going. We are the, the fire that is our passion, and we are the, the air that is our breath. And as we start to see that we are all the elemental beings on this earth, and that we are power beyond reason and force beyond imagining, and that we stand before the altar of our existence, claiming our right to stand in this world, claiming our right to think into existence, our very being and our essence. We start to claim something so much greater than we ever thought we could have as we claim the very essence of ourselves and the very power of kind of the war we fight on this earth, the sense to remain within our identity, within our life purpose, when the world tries to pull us half a million different directions. It moves us to our subconscious inner self, which is the nine of swords, worry, doubt, fear, chaos, hurt, pain, disappointment. It's like everything, everything comes forward and it clouds the way that we see things. We can actually find that we get headaches, especially if we don't sleep enough. We need to take care of ourselves, but we need to also look at the way that we're, we're handling stress. This is saying here, don't worry so much, which is so easy to say and so hard to do, but stop the worry and start the centering. We cannot change the world. What we have to trust is that divinity has a purpose and that our footsteps forward get to be gentle, kind, and purposeful. It moves us to our subconscious emotional self, which is the four of wands celebration. It is the minor arcana marriage card, is connection and joy and intensity and brilliance. 
It is a sense of new job opportunities opening for us, a moving house. This is a, a celebration of life and of, of being and of essence. And it's another four. So now we have number four, three times it's connecting with us and it's, it's taking care of us. We get to find what we're dedicated to, what our life is so much and intrinsically a part of, and it moves us to our subconscious public arena self. And that's judgment. We're finding that we're rising out of the box that we put ourselves in, that society put us in, that somebody put us in. And now we're finding that we're rising out of the doubts and the fears and the negativities and the hurts and the pains and the chaos. And we're rising into ourselves more and more. We're answering the call of who we truly are and where we truly want to be. All right, Scorpio. I hope this reading has resonated with you. I wish you nothing but light, love, peace, and happiness. May harmony always be with you. I'm sending loving, healing energy to each and every one of you. I love you all and stay safe. Let's end this reading with a meditation, a clearing away of negative energy, a raising of our positive energy as we embrace the power and the intensity that is the unraveling of all the chaos that is around us by our angels. So take a nice deep breath in, exhaling whenever it feels comfortable for you. May you move forward in peace and in harmony, Scorpio.